Welcome back, fight fans, to another video here on the fight game. If some fighters can be known for their speed and other fighters can be known for their power, Floyd Mayweather can be known simply for being the best. 50 fights, 50 victories. A billion dollar fighter who trained as if he hadn't a dollar to his name. He's best known for his defensive skills. While many men are known to be good at many things, Mayweather is known to be a master of one. The art of boxing, a discipline to hit and not get hit. Because of his style, he has managed to become one of the greatest boxers to grace the sport, but a consequence of this style has been the stigma surrounding the entertainment factor. While many of us can sit down and enjoy the defensive skills he portrays, there's nothing quite like a good old-fashioned slugfest. Because of his so-to-say boring methods of winning, fans have often called Mayweather a runner. However, it matters not to Floyd because it's he who has his faculties in place. And after all, the only thing that truly mattered was the name of the game, to win. But what many don't realize is that Mayweather's career spans over the course of 20 years, and that the Mayweather you see in the defensive highlight reels is not the same Mayweather that brought him to the pinnacle of the sport. Before he was called Money Mayweather, he went by the name Pretty Boy. In this version of Floyd, well, he was far from boring. He was not shy in bringing the full capability of his power to the ring. He pushed the action, he went for the knockout, he put his opponents on the back foot. When Floyd Mayweather was in his natural weight division of 130 pounds, he was the absolute opposite of boring. He was the quintessence in the finesse of aggressiveness. So while Mayweather had some beautiful defensive moments in the latter stages of his career, we wind back the clock to where Floyd Mayweather was not known as money, but as pretty boy. Welcome to this video here on The Fight Game where we take a look at the origin of intellect in the breakdown of the pugilistic science of Floyd Pretty Boy Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather made his professional debut at 19 years old with Jeff and Roger Mayweather in his corner. If you find the referee familiar, that's no other than Kenny Bayless. Mayweather had been a promising prospect after just competing in the Olympics, and Mayweather was eager to get the ball rolling in the professional ranks. From the offset, we can see how Mayweather's style is more invasive rather than evasive. Notice Mayweather maneuvering his head to the sides. This is a fundamental component that makes part of the pretty boy style. On the surface, it's to keep his head off the straight line, making it difficult for the opponent to set up a punch. But it also tests the opponent's reactions. Mayweather figures out how his opponent reacts when he jolts to the left and to the right, and with this information, he can decide what to throw and when to throw. His constant maneuvering makes him unpredictable. His attacks are based off his opponent's openings, and because of that, it's almost impossible to tell when and what Mayweather will throw. Soon, Mayweather got his opponent to the corner and dropped him for the first time. With his opponent hurt, Mayweather let go of a number of flurries. The start of the second round saw Mayweather drop his opponent again with another body shot to win the fight. A very successful pro debut for Floyd Pretty Boy Mayweather. The following fight saw Mayweather collect a string of knockouts. He improved as you would expect from a young fighter. The competition was never going to be world class in the beginning stages, but seeing the beginning stages of mastery at work is still a sight to behold. His pot shot jab to the body was effective in slowing his opponents down, and he even dropped an opponent with one too. His reputation was one of a power puncher, not like the defensive one he has today. But on top of his power, he had remarkable skill. Watch him here synchronize a strike with his opponents. Leaning his head to the left prompts a jab from the opponent, and Mayweather simultaneously splits the guard with his right hand. This is an attack of precise timing and extremely effective against one of opposite stance. Another notable mention of a boxer who also does this is Manny Pacquiao. Soon we saw the pull counter come into play. For those that don't know, the pull counter is a signature move from Floyd Mayweather, where he extends his upper body as bait for the opponent, and when the opponent attacks, he pulls back, then pushes off his back leg to counter with a right hand. Mayweather often rotates his back foot before throwing to save time. Mayweather fought 10 times in 1997. 
He was dedicated to being the best ever and his work ethic was practically unmatched in the sport. Contrary to what a lot of haters like to say today, Mayweather was a pure power puncher in the 130 pound division. There was no so-called running here, that's for sure. He's a student of the game, a true boxing historian. Watch him here land the gazelle punch, a punch brought to fame by the likes of Floyd Patterson. At such a young age, Floyd had a large cache of weapons in his arsenal. He embarrassed his opponents as he outclassed them, all in an aggressive manner. A true master at evading the punches while cutting them down. Mayweather was a nightmare for anyone to face when he reigned in his natural weight division. He progressed to be a very good inside fighter. He became extremely good at using his shoulder roll defense when pressed up close against his opponent. Fast, athletic, strong, prime pretty boy would hold his ground against any 130 pounder from any generation. But even still, while being so relentless, he's so hard to catch. One moment he's there, then he's not. Mayweather's first world title shot came against Hernando Hernandez when he was only 21 years old. Hernandez was a true veteran. He knew all the tricks to the game, and many doubted Mayweather's ability to win as Hernandez hadn't lost in 14 years of fighting at that particular weight class of 130 pounds. However, after advice from his father, the Mayweather family took on the bout with full confidence. It was now time for Mayweather to show what he was truly capable of. The fight started with Mayweather attacking with his lead hand. Mayweather jolted Hernandez to the ground, showing his superior physicality. Mayweather continued to look for openings, but then Hernandez bullied him back. A true veteran of boxing knows to bend the rules if needed. It was close in the beginning, but it seemed that Mayweather's boxing ability triumphed the experience of Hernandez. Mayweather's signature pull counter set up a lot of combinations. Mayweather refused to fold in the clinch, getting the better of Hernandez when they fought in close. This caused Hernandez to fight on the back foot, with Mayweather cutting him down. And while Hernandez is a veteran, the young Mayweather also had a few tricks up his sleeve. A big determining factor in allowing Mayweather to get the better of the clinches was his use of the forearm. Look at how Mayweather raises his forearm when both come close. This allows Mayweather to push Hernandez back easily. A true veteran move done by a fighter with only two years of experience in the pro game. The more time that passes in a Floyd Mayweather fight, the smarter he gets. Mayweather by the middle stages had recognized the cues of his opponent's attacks, and with that he was able to remain extremely elusive to the counterattacks of Hernandez. Hernandez showed a champion's heart, but it was no match for the speed, power, and ferocity of Floyd Mayweather. It became a one-sided beatdown. Mayweather began to beat Hernandez badly, and eventually the corner stopped the fight before any more unnecessary punishment. Mayweather clearly emotional after winning his first ever world title, years of hard work and dedication finally bared its fruits, and Mayweather had really solidified himself as one of the top champions in the sport. For show of respect for a great champion who was beaten by a younger, better fighter tonight. No better said. After winning his first world title, it wasn't long for Larry Merchant to bring up Angel Manfredi, who was considered to be the best 130 pounder in the sport at the time. Are you willing to fight Angel Manfredi, who is considered one of the better 130 pounders in the world? Um, I'm willing to fight Angel Manfredi whenever. Um, he's a good fighter, but um, I just feel I'm the best 130 pounder in the world. Manfredi, in my mind, is the best one. He's uh -huh. the best I've ever seen. He's a terrific all around fighter who has both offense and defense. Talks followed of a matchup between the two, and Mayweather took on Manfredi in his next fight. From one top-tier fighter to another, Mayweather was ready to take on all challenges. Manfredi was a durable opponent, and he loved to fight on the inside. Mayweather knew this, and he kept Manfredi at a distance. Mayweather boxed aggressively, but as I said, at a distance. Watch how after this combination, Mayweather pushes Manfredi to the side with his forearm. Mayweather didn't allow Manfredi to use his key strength, inside fighting. Then Mayweather landed a massive right hand, then he capitalized pushing Manfredi back to the ropes, forcing a stoppage. In just two rounds, Mayweather had TKO'd one of the most ruthless fighters in the 130-pound division. With a finish like that, it was not premature to place Mayweather at the top of the pound-for-pound -pound rankings. 
an impressive victory for the very impressive Floyd Pretty Boy Mayweather. Mayweather would continue to defend his world title successfully, adding more knockout stoppages to his record. Soon he would defend his belt against the undefeated Diego Corrales. You had to have been tuned into boxing at this time to truly understand how Diego Corrales was widely considered to be the boogeyman of the 130-pound division. His record at the time was 33 fights, 33 wins, 0 losses. He was quite the knockout artist himself, too. 29 of his 33 victories had come by knockout. Mayweather was an underdog going into this fight, and as a matter of fact, this was the last time in Floyd Mayweather's whole career where he came in as the underdog. Because when the bell rang for the fight to commence, it was time for Floyd Mayweather to do what Mayweather does best. Notice here Mayweather using his forearm again to disallow Corrales to get on the inside. He would later use his forearm a second time and ended up fighting an opening for the right hand. To beat a bigger opponent, Mayweather knew to pot shot the body with the jab, something Mayweather later became renowned for in the following years. These constant pot shots suck the air out of the opponent, making them fatigue. Mayweather continued to outbox Corrales. Watch this sequence here. Floyd probes with his lead hand three times, measuring the distance and the pace of which both fighters are moving. Then Mayweather lets go of a right with perfect timing. This is elite level boxing. He knew the pace Corrales was traveling as he was at the end of his lead hand each time, and he simply timed Corrales to walk onto the right hand. Floyd continued to do what he was doing, being elusive but effective in his punches. Both fighters had contested well, but Floyd was too quick. Along came round seven, and Floyd instantly dropped Corrales. Mayweather with a victory in sight up the pace, then soon dropped Corrales again with another massive left hook to the jaw. Watch how Mayweather does this. First he jabs to the body, then he drops his left hand down low, making Corrales think another jab to the body is coming, resulting in a drop of the guard in anticipation of said body shot. But then Mayweather goes back up to the head to drop Corrales. To do this real time in the ring can only be done by the most intelligent of boxers. Mayweather followed with another knockdown just before the end of the round. The fight continued until the 10th round where Mayweather dropped Corrales twice to end the show. Corrales' corner stopped the fight, and even though Corrales was unhappy the fight ended, it was the right thing to do. Mayweather defied the odds. He triumphed in Las Vegas and solidified himself as boxing's pound-for-pound -pound best. That brings a close to this video. Of course, we all know Mayweather would go on to win world titles in four more weight divisions to become a five-weight world champion and establish himself as what many consider to be the best ever, with 26 consecutive wins in world title fights. But it's also good to acknowledge the man he was before doing all of this, a true underdog, a man who never backed down from the greatest of challenges. He has many haters, but all successful people generally do. But those who are true fans of the sweet science know that both versions of Floyd Mayweather, the aggressive counterpuncher and the defensive counterpuncher, are two versions that will stand the test of time for many generations to come. It's hard not to marvel at the defensive genius Mayweather came to be, and it's also hard not to enjoy the aggressive side. But if there's one thing for sure, when it comes to the sport of boxing as a whole, when it comes to fame, money, and health, Mayweather is a sure winner, like he was in all 50 of his fights. Like most things in boxing, he will never truly be appreciated until time passes. After all, things can really only be understood when looking backwards. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like as it helps us grow the channel. We'll see you in the next video here on the fight game.